Hello, my name is John Thuma. Today we're going to go over using support vector machines in Aster. And this is part of the Aster Analytic Learning Series. So, support vector machines is part of our statistical analysis genre of analytical functions available to you in Aster. Basically what support vectors machines is, is it's or SVM, is a predictive data classification algorithm basically assigns data elements to one of labeled categories. It's generally used for binary classification but can be used for multi-classification. Use cases are, and the use case we're going to show today is for medical diagnosis. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. It's also great for image or object detection so I can use this to determine apples or pears or grapes uh, from an image um, and it's also good for document classification. SVM, a fun fact here, is uh, really a one against all adopted function, especially when it comes to multi, um, you know, multi classification algorithms. So um, it's it's a, it's a very fun machine learning algorithm. I've had a lot of fun doing this uh, exercise today. All right, so a little bit more about uh, SVM. Basically, what it does is it maximizes the distance between two groups or multiple groups of objects, and these things are called parallel hyperplanes. And if you put the parallel hyperplane as an individual thing, there would be an infinite amount of them between these two groups of objects. And what this does is it maximizes the parallel distance between those two groups of objects, and that is the support vector, or what they call parallel hyperplanes. To achieve this, it's basically a two-step process. I have two functions, sparse SVM trainer and sparse SVM predictor. And we're going to go ahead and the rest of our analytic is going to be about this. So a little bit about the data and what we're doing. Our use case is around predicting six diagnoses based on 360 patients um, with um, already classified diagnosis for particular types of skin or skin diseases um, and what we have is 33 or 34 variables that help determine um, those those disease outcomes and we're going to train a model with those known elements here so this is really the model training so we'll take that training set and we'll push that into sparse SVM trainer out will come a model we'll use that model along with a, t a test data set of unknown um, skin allergies with the 34 variables as well and we'll push that into a sparse SVM predictor and out will become uh, out will come the predicted results. I do recommend it, it, when you do this um, you take a look at the unpivot in Aster video that's already been previously recorded. Um, it'll help you understand the things I had to do to get the data in into the format that is good for the sparse SVM trainer. A little bit about the data, it came from this gentleman here in Turkey in this university. Wanted to give them props and um, I'll be putting this up on the community once our community goes live. Um, with that said, let's take a look at the data input for the sparse SVM trainer. Really simple data set, it's basically this PIV SVM in cast table. It has these four attributes or these four columns of PID, a patient identifier, disease classification description or cl disease class description which is a a description of one of the six um, diseases that we're trying to predict that are already known for these patients, an attribute, and a value. An attribute is one of the variables, and if you look over here, here's the patient ID, here's the disease class description, so this is for psoriasis, and here are the 34 variables, and here are the values that are associated with those variables. And if you look at the previous screen in more detail, it'll explain what these variables really mean, and it's really just a threshold of severity of, the, of this observation. So let's go ahead and get started. How does the input of the table reflect how that's used inside of the sparse SVM trainer? Basically, you have the input table, which is our input table in blue here. Um, the model table is going to be the result of the output. So this is going to be rendered as the model that we'll use to actually use this to do the predictions later. The simple ID column is from here. So this ID column comes from here. Uh, the attribute column is the green attribute. So that's attribute column here. And then the value associated with that attribute comes from this table right here. And the disease class code, or excuse me, the disease class description is right here. And this is basically what the rest of these things mean. Um, the sample ID column, or the, excuse me, the input table is our training data set, the data from this table right here. 
Uh, the model table is our output model table that we're going to generate, the model that we're going to generate. The, simple, uh, the sample ID column is the natural key for the data or the, the, the PID or the patient ID. Um, the attribute column is the observation variable. Um, and then the value column is the value associated with that variable. And then the label column is basically the, the, the disease that we're trying to uh, use to predict um, or the, the, to train that prediction based on those variables. And the max step is the number of epochs or, or cycles that we're going to take for the training process overall. And then once I run this, I'll get this kind of a message back that says that my PIV SVM in model was successfully created. Moving on. So to test the data, we're going to take a look at the test data. So this is what we're going to use. This is the data set that we're going to use that is not classified. These are not diagnosed patients with any diseases. They have the same, has the same basic form of the data. So I have a patient ID. I have an attribute, which is the variable, 34 variables, and then I have a value for that. Um, and this is basically the unpredicted, undiagnosed patient data. And as you can see, this is the table that I'm using. So it's very similar um, in the schema to the actual data that we use to train the, uh, train the, the set. So let's get started. So to do this, so I take this is my, my uh, input schema for my um, test data. And I'm going to use that right here, P PIV SVM test data right here, as input partition by PID. So we're going to partition all of our data, because I have 34 outcomes per patient in here, by this patient identifier. I'm going to use the PIV SVM in model that I rendered, generated from the previous SVM train uh, 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 statement above, or in, in the previous uh, slides. And then my sample ID is my PID, sample ID column is my PID, patient identifier. My attribute column, again, is my attribute from right here. And then my value column is the value that's associated with that value for that patient. And that's right there. And then I run this, and that's basically, it, it basically is how all of this works. And the output looks like this. What you'll see is, is I'm gonna, I actually created a table from the previous PIV SVM predict and I'm just running the output. So each one of these patient observations was diagnosed a predicted value of this disease class and it was given this confidence level. And this confidence level is basically a number between zero and one and it just basically says, what's the quality of my, of my uh, prediction? So that's pretty much it for that. But just to show you that I actually did it and I did this in Aster Express with a small data set, of course, and you could do this with against a very large data set. Here's my training data set, so select star from PIV SVM in cast, and here's my data right here. And then I come down here and this is my trainer, this is where I'm the sparse SVM trainer model that's going to render my um, my model table, PIV SVM in model, and that's going to give me a result set that looks very similar to this right here. It's just going to be an output that says my model was created successfully. And then I want to take a look at my test data to see what my test data looks like, and sure enough, here it is. PID, attribute, and value for the variable. So it's the patient identifier, all the variables associated with that patient and the observations. And then the severity and the value of the variable that's associated with the attribute. And then this is what it took to build my um, actual prediction. So I'm putting, bumping that up against and running that against the, the model with that input data from that test. And I'm gonna create this table called PIV SVM predict. I come down here and I just basically run this particular query and I look at the result set and there it is. I have just shown you how to do um, patient diagnosis prediction using Aster and support vector machines. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I had creating it and it's a very powerful and fun analytic. Have a happy, happy day. Bye.